best news this country has had for months. 19 days ago, four-year-old Cleo Smith vanished from a tent at a popular camping spot about 70 kilometres north of the West Australian town of Carnarvon. Now, most of us, to be honest, would have thought by now that she was dead. I mean, I did. But the police did not give up. When around one o'clock this morning, they raided a home in Carnarvon, her hometown. It's my privilege to announce that in the early hours of this morning, the Western Australian Police Force rescued Cleo Smith. Cleo is alive and well. A police team broke their way into a locked house in Carnarvon at about 1am. They found little Cleo in one of those rooms. One of the officers picked her up into his arms and asked her, what's your name? She said, my name is Cleo. Police have now released video of that wonderful moment. Yes. Cleo, yeah. my name's Cameron, how are you? Uh, are you OK? We're going to take and see your mummy and daddy, OK? Is that good? The West Australian Premier, Mark McGowan, said it was actually police work, hard police work, that found and saved Chloe. It's an amazing piece of police work, an amazing, amazing piece of detective work. I think this will be uh, looked at by uh, police forces around the nation and indeed around the world as to what can be done if you have the right people and the uh, right way of looking at it and uh, you do it, uh, do it methodically uh, with determination. Now just to underline that point, police this afternoon confirmed they got no lucky tip-off about where Cleo was and no one's going to get the $1 million reward. It was the police. A hundred police worked on this full time. It wasn't just them too. There were analysts too, checking things like phone records. And there were SA, SES volunteers, the public helping out too. This is such a marvellous story. What a great day. Uh, we now have uh, returned Cleo to her loving parents. Uh, it's a wonderful day for uh, this little girl and her loving family. Um, it is a really special day for Western Australia. Indeed, I know the nation is rejoicing. I'm not a Christian, but there's a passage in the Bible that sums up this miracle, this joy of getting Cleo returned to us. Prodigal son bit. Returning home. The father saying, because this my son was dead and he is alive. He was lost. And now is found. And how many of us feel that a life has been restored to us? This is news that has transfixed Australia. So I congratulate the Western Australia State Police. They've done a tremendous job there. Uh, had this occurred in another state or territory, I know it, the exact same thing would have happened in terms of the capabilities that would have been brought together. And uh, so we're just very pleased and, and very proud of those who did such a great job to bring Cleo home. And Cleo's mum today posted on Instagram just this, our family is whole again. And you know, this is the social media age, the ugliness that goes with that. We should remind ourselves and maybe learn a lesson from the hell that Cleo's parents went through. It wasn't just the fear and the loss and the terror of losing their daughter. The police never suspected them. But many in the public did and were vile enough to say so. Isn't that just such a sick part of our social media mob? Can I finally also acknowledge Ellie and Jake, uh, Cleo's uh, parents. Uh, they've been through a lot over the last 18 days. Uh, terrible trauma, uh, some vicious attacks um, and uh, some no doubt very, very trying and sad times. So to them, I know all of our thoughts go to them. And we're so pleased that little Cleo has been taken back to them. I was joined a short while ago by Sky News Perth correspondent Ashley Gillen. I asked her what we know so far of how Cleo was found. From what we know from police, the breakthrough happened late yesterday that had a range of information by the sounds of it that had led police in this direction. But then we understand there was a tip off that then led them to this house in Carnarvon, which is north of Perth. This house is just a few minutes away from the local police station and also from Cleo's parents home. We understand that at around 1am, four police officers got to the house. They broke down the door because the house was locked. 
and they found little Cleo in there all alone. A, a man was then arrested close to the house and when the officers got in there to find Cleo, they said to her, um, what's your name? And she said, my name is Cleo. And apparently that just floored the officers involved when the news was then relayed to their commanding officers and even up to the WA Police Commissioner, who's, as you would imagine, been around the block a few times. We heard how these pretty hardened coppers all just broke down with tears at the relief that she'd finally been found after what has been such a harrowing search for 18 days. Nobody thought that we'd have this good news story outcome today after all that digging through CCTV footage, through mobile phone data, through the dark web, through rubbish bins on highways. Finally, this, this breakthrough today that everybody really hoped would happen, but nobody really thought would come to fruition. There's some talk of a neighbour spotting a, a local buying nappies or with nappies, someone that they didn't expect to have a child that needed nappies. Is there any truth to that? This is a story that neighbours have told to reporters there in Carnarvon, that this man who has been arrested, who we know is a 36-year-old man, that police are saying has no connection to Cleo's family. Neighbours have been telling reporters on the scene that um, this man alleged to be involved in this was spotted on Monday in Woolworths buying nappies. And this neighbour, as he relayed this story to one reporter, said that it didn't click to him at the time that this man wouldn't have a need to buy nappies, that he didn't have children in his life that would need nappies. Another story that's been relayed to reporters who are there in Carnarvon is that another neighbour heard a little girl crying uh, at the home a couple of nights ago, but again, just had never imagined that um, this person, that that street would be involved in something uh, as horrific as this. So it, it has been really... Interesting and, and quite terrifying listening to the neighbours talking about this. I guess this happens every time a, a serious crime is, is committed, that everybody nearby that knows the person are in shock that that person uh, is allegedly involved in something like this. Another neighbour saying that uh, the man that has been arrested was, was known as a, an insular, sort of lonely man that, that didn't speak a lot uh, with neighbours. So we don't know a whole lot about the man apart from the fact that he is 36-year-old, he's in custody and police are obviously going to be uh, hitting him with a lot of hard questions about exactly what has gone on over the past 18 days. Now, Asha, the police made very clear quite early on that they did not suspect the parents. Obviously, in an investigation like this, you do look at the close uh, family for a start. I mean, quite, quite often that is, in fact, where the guilty party is. Not in this case... But that didn't stop a lot of people from letting the parents know that they did think them guilty. They must have gone through absolute hell. It's such a cliche, isn't it, Andrew, to talk about this being a parent's worst nightmare, but in this case, not only are they dealing with their gorgeous little four-year-old girl plucked from the family tent on a camping trip, but they've also had to deal with this vitriol on social media, armchair detectives assuming that the parents had something to do with it. We know from the statistics that when a child is abducted, often there is a family link. We know that when harm is done to a child, more often than not it is someone who is known to the child. But police did have to come out on several occasions and, and really try and make that point clearly that the parents were not suspects in this investigation. So yes, not only have they had to go through the trauma of not knowing where their daughter is or what had happened to them, but they have been attacked online by people who, who thought they know better. I think that they, you know, obviously the police are saying that the parents had never given up hope, as you wouldn't. As a parent, you'd always want to keep that hope alive. But uh, day after day, this is a story, especially here in Western Australia, that's really captivated the community. There's been, um, you know, interviews with investigators who worked on the Maddie McCann case in Europe, and they were making the point that usually when children are taken by strangers, they only stay alive for an average of three to six hours. It seemed very unlikely that this little girl, Cleo Smith, was going to be found alive. Today, she's alive. She's well, is the way that police are describing her condition. She spent the day in a local hospital in the arms of her parents who, as you say, have been to Helen back. And look, the trauma for that whole family, I wouldn't have thought, is over. They've still got a long road to go as they as they grapple with, with what's happened to little Cleo.
Ashley Gillen, thank you so much for that. I mean, fantastic news, but it comes from a really, really dark place to start with. Thank you very much for your time.